precious and all wonderful, all glorious and all powerful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. My name is Brian Mason. And in this Bible study, part one, believe not every spirit. Continuing the study in the first epistle of John. We've reached chapter 4. Now this is quite, quite some statement by John. Yet it is the word of God, the word of the Holy Ghost, and the word of warning. That even in the very early days of the church, that there was that at work which would deceive which would not be of, of Christ himself. And John was so clear in giving his warning. Beloved, oh John speaking, yes, he had this deep, deep care for the body of Christ. That is, every believer in Christ, everyone who knew their position in Christ, the royal priesthood of believers, as, as Peter had said. And here was John with his word of very clear warning to the fledgling, as it were, church, that not all was well, because there were those who had gone away from the truths of God's word, even in the very, very early stages of the growth of the church. And it is this warning which we have to, must do, take hold of and understand that it wasn't just for, for those days when John gave this warning but for that every age throughout the church, even today, in fact today, perhaps even greater warning needed of what it is, what that not every spirit is of God. Believe not every spirit but try the spirits, whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. False prophets, not those who are calling sinners to repentance and preaching the the very full word of God to the need to repent of sin, repent of sins in order to receive a pardon from God, in order to enter the kingdom of God. And here was John making it so clear that not every prophet. Oh, there are there still many who call themselves prophets in these days. But yet, they can be seen as false prophets. Because they're not putting Jesus Christ in the right context. Not giving him the preeminence. Not showing him to be the only way to God. Oh, will not be popular. The false prophets undoubtedly will be very popular. Because they're not calling sinners sinners. They're not calling to repentance. And here, let's move on to verse 2. Hereby know we, ye the Spirit of God. This is the Spirit of God, not the Spirit of Antichrist. Because we know the Spirit of God will acknowledge 
that Jesus Christ is the Son of God who was who came in in the flesh who came to be born of, as man and not not someone who was denying the deity of Jesus Christ because this is what is at at stake here it is whether Jesus Christ is God or whether he is merely a man and John was fully aware that there were those who were teaching that Jesus Christ was no different was only man and there's only man he could never be the saviour he could never bring about the forgiveness of sins. And it's the Spirit of God within our hearts, within the hearts of the believer, who will have no trouble whatsoever in acknowledging who Jesus Christ is the Son of God. For every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Clearly, that message is that the Christian, the believer, the ones who know that they are Christ belong to him they rejoice because they know whom they have believed whom they have received and they will confess with their lips confess with their whole heart that Jesus Christ is God That does the opposite. We're told in verse 3, And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. That's the test. The difference. Either believing, accepting that Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone is God the Son in all the fullness of God having all the attributes of God having the very life of God and those who refuse to acknowledge and to accept that Jesus Christ is God the Son Oh, the rebellious spirit, so they won't acknowledge him. It's not within, within them. No, they, they, get, they will be greatly troubled at hearing that Jesus Christ is God the Son. And this is the spirit of what? The spirit of Antichrist. The spirit of Antichrist is that which will not acknowledge, will not accept Jesus Christ is God the Son Jesus Christ is, is deity and it is so, so fundamental to the basis of Christianity And this is the spirit, yes, of Antichrist. And that spirit of Antichrist is still at work. Let us not be blind to this. Let us, let us not be taken in. Because there are still false prophets. There are still those who, even with the word of God, 
have been at work and still are at work, denying that Jesus Christ is God. And it's it's in the Word of God that we have to be very clear and we have to look. How does is Jesus Christ acknowledged in your Bible? Is he clearly shown to be God? Or is he just a son of the God? Always be aware that not everything that calls itself a Bible is the word, a true word of God. Because there are many, many false Bibles. Have a look at Daniel chapter 3 and verse 25. And if your Bible only has that the fourth one, let's, let's have a look at this. It is a son of the gods then. That Bible is absolutely useless because it is not accepting that Jesus Christ is God. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire and they have no hurt and the fourth form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Yes, absolutely fine when your Bible says like the Son of God. It should say like a son of the gods. That is not, not Jesus Christ. No, no, no. It is dangerous ground and that Bible is fit for nothing but to be cast away because one part not acknowledging who the Son of God is there will be other parts in it undoubtedly who will be not acknowledging that Jesus Christ is deity. Yes, beware Beware of what, that there, there, even in that which will call itself church, call itself Christianity, there are false teachings, false Bibles. And we're so, so thankful, so grateful to John that he has made us aware that not everything was right then and not everything is right now wherefore ye have heard that it should come and even now already is in the world the spirit of antichrist the spirit which will not accept Jesus Christ in contrast Ye are of God, little children, and over, have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Who is it? It is Jesus Christ by his Spirit, by the Holy Spirit, when he has come into our lives born again of the Spirit of God when it is born again of the Spirit of God then it is not the Spirit of Antichrist and remembering the position of the believer in Christ is to be not just some, someone who he just accepts that Jesus died for them at Calvary. 
the two that all that God has to give is found in Jesus Christ. That is why it's so important, so vital. There is that understanding of the deity of Jesus Christ. The understanding that Jesus Christ is every bit equal with the Father, every bit God. And it is because He is within, not without, but within, that our lives have been changed. Our lives have been transformed. And the old life, the old nature, was there anything good in the old nature? No, not at all. Because it was a nature which had the fallen nature. And by fallen nature, the rebellious nature of the devil himself. And, and it needed that new nature, the nature of God, which he had created man for to have his own, own life within. And it's because the life of God has come within, not without us, within us, that he is, he will, so take us on with himself, so change changes from glory to glory, so, make us like himself, that the power of God is able to be manifested. That is, the power of God can come, come out through us. And that, if you considered, that the Holy Ghost within, within the believer. The believer quite often will not be taught this, not though they won't have a clue about it. But within the believer is more powerful than Satan, the devil, every demonic spirit, because the Holy Ghost is God. That's why John wrote that. Yes, there may be very few who, who actually have grasped this. Because it is God within. And God within can speak out into situations, can transform situations, whether it be in the individual life or in the life of a nation or on an international scale. That's what, what it's all about. And God needs, needs a, a fresh, he needs to, he's wanting to see a fresh understanding, a fresh grasp in our own days of what the depths of the Word of God is saying. Undoubtedly, he has spoken very clearly in these last, last days, last few days, and he's still speaking because he's looking to move, move on his plan, to see his plan, not the Antichrist's plan, but his plan to move on, to reach into individual lives of every person in every nation. And not just in individual lives, but in, 
in nations themselves that every part of life will be will have the very life of God within it and in contrast verse 5 they are of the world therefore speak they of the world and the world heareth them yes the world still has a strong voice but the world is the antichrist system the world rejects the Son of God and, this, and the Christian they're not of the world oh yes there are many who will call themselves Christian but they live as though they belong to the world their thinking is of the world not of what God is looking to be his life coming forth out of individual lives God has so much to give so much to do that there needs to be that that hungering that thirsting that seeking to get we could never get to the bottom it's a it's uh, as though it's it's a well but has no no bottom to it a stream of living water which continues to flow and to flow and it touches every area within the within your life when you will let God have your all when you're not keeping closing parts of your life to him and it's not it's not onerous no God will never ask something from us unless he has something better to replace it and what better to replace it than his own divine nature the fullness of God the inexhaustible fullness of God day by day moment by moment walking with him talking with him knowing that our hearts are filled with joy even when it seems that there are great difficulties because we can't get away from difficulties in life it's not easy we weren't life is not easy at all but it's so different when when we know that it is God God taking us on with himself and seeing from his point of view that whatever he may allow to come against us there will be those who well, they, who don't like us because of of because we're Christian there were those who who could be quite opposed to us because Jesus didn't speak of a, an easy life no far from it it was a life which took up the cross daily a life which died to self daily and a life which which will will go forward with every confidence in himself no matter what appears to be an obstacle in the way is no obstacle because it takes us into a more fuller 
understanding of himself, a fuller way of seeing as God sees. And as we see as God sees, we will see that he doesn't mean us any harm, that to take us into the inexhaustible supply of the riches which are in Jesus Christ. That's God. He's not a God who skimps, a God of fullness. We are of God. So a clear message here to those who are in Christ. He that knoweth God heareth us. And that's wonderful for brothers and sisters in Christ, no matter where they are in this world, that we recognize that there are many who have come to Christ. We may not see exactly eye to eye in our doctrine, as long as we're in Christ and we have those fundamentals we can ac we accept whoever they are wherever they come from even ones who have come from completely different situations it is the love of God in Christ within them that draws us to them he that it is not of God heareth not us. It has to be the grace of God drawing to Jesus Christ, opening hearts. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. And how do is the spirit of truth known? It is through Jesus Christ who is truth. O oh God, our Father, thank Thee for thy, thy wonderful, wonderful Word. There is so much depth in Thy Word, that yet in these days there needs to be the help of the Holy Spirit to open the understanding of Thy Word amongst those who, who have received Jesus Christ as Saviour. To be able to take them on and on and on. To discover the fullness of God in Jesus Christ. And may there be the raising up of men and women who have the Holy Ghost within them. And that they will be become teachers of thy word, opening the word to the understanding of the hearts of those who you are now creating a hunger and a thirst for thy word. For this is asked through the name of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and for thy glory. Amen.